stories of heroes from Afghanistan, but often uh, that's uh, it's the soldiers we're talking about who save the lives of their fellow men. But for Pen Farthing, he's a, a hero for a very different reason. Right, he's here to tell us why with Wiley the dog and Wiley's owner Sarah. Welcome to all of you. Um, so tell, tell us a story about Wiley. When, when you first met him, when you first heard about him, what sort of state was he in when he was first rescued? Um, sadly, Wiley wasn't in a good state at all. He'd had his ears docked, his tail docked. We think he was kind of being groomed for dog fighting, which sadly some aspects of the Afghan society actually do. Um, and he came to us. We have the Nauzad charity in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. and we promote animal welfare. And we actually have Afghans who work for us. And we got told about him. He came to us and said he's in pretty sorry state, but our Afghans got to work on him. And, him, you know, hopefully we patched him up quite well. Um, at the time with the facilities we had. Mm. Well, he looks like he's got ears, but I mean, that's just the hair around. Yes, in actual fact, yes certainly they've docked them, yeah, there. quite Why close. Why do they do but, that? Um, when the dogs are fighting, um, Afghan dogs have really big floppy ears, and so sadly, obviously, one dog can grab hold of the other mm. dog's ears, so they dock them to prevent that. My goodness me. And so once you'd sort of patched him up, he was then taken to a, a, an Australian police officer and uh, uh, looked after, um, and went for a 3 a.m. stroll, and was once again cruelly treated yeah sadly when the soldiers do look after dogs which they do on the bases in afghanistan they can't actually have them inside the perimeter so wiley was free to wander um, and as you can see he's just so mellow and chilled out with everybody he thought he'd go off and kind of forgotten what he'd already been through and so sadly people grabbed hold of him again and he was cruelly i mean if what had happened to him bef before wasn't cruel then this was an even further advance of that yeah i mean sadly we th believe he was they tried to throw him underneath the car um, which thankfully he survived. He rolled out the, the back from under the car. So the soldiers grabbed hold of him and then came back to us and said, look, you know, you're going to have to take him because there's no way mm -hmm. we can look after him. It's quite unbelievable how trusting and loving he is. Yeah. When you think what he's been through and how badly he's been treated by humans, by man, and, and yet he's sat here now just the most gorgeous dog. And, uh, and it's men in particular that he actually likes. He really does, you know, if he sees a, a guy he doesn't know, he'll go up to him and his tail's wagging, which is just unbelievable for what he's been through. So. Mm. And, and, and on the sentry post, you must have witnessed this time and time again. Um, you do, yeah. I mean, you see lots, sadly, lots of the dogs out in Afghanistan. I mean, there is no programme, apart from what we run now, um, back when I was out there, that you know, looks after the dogs. And oh, sadly, obviously, the people are struggling to look after themselves. So mm. animal welfare was kind of you know, pushed to the to the back but yeah you see it a lot but you do see then the soldiers actually being compassionate and trying to look after these animals while they're out there. So that is his time there, his gruesome time there and then you guys, amazing in your treatment of him, managed to save him. How has he ended up here? <laughs> um, well one of those soldiers was um, an Australian and they were going to take Wiley. Um, they wanted to give him a home um, so we had to bring Wiley to Britain first to go through quarantine to then be exported to Australia. Um, sadly though, Australia changed their quarantine rules the day that Wiley came out of quarantine here in England. Um, and so we weren't able to send him, so we were looking for a, a foster for him because we don't want to keep him in kennels any longer. Um, and that's where Sarah came along. And Sarah, you'd seen his story, you sort of followed his story right away from the beginning online and then you eventually got to meet him and you fell in love with him pretty much straight away. Yeah, I'd seen his story on Facebook and that really upset me, just footage of him being sort of tended to by the soldiers and yeah I'd followed his story and then I had a chance meeting like speaking to Penn and he said I could go and meet him because I just I've always felt like I wanted to apologize to him for everything he's been yeah. through so went down to see him in the kennels fell in love and then started the but a love that you thought was going to end in disaster because he was going to go to Australia and then of course the law changed and he didn't which gave yeah. you this opportunity to be able to to keep him and I have know. him yes that was Two what's years his, ago now. What's his nature? <laughs> he's like this at home. He's he's so well behaved. You can take him anywhere, put him in any situation. He's not at all phased by anything. <laughs> he's just so gorgeous. Um, and he was entered into Scruffs. Yes, I entered him into Scruffs, the crossbreed competition, and he beat over 1,200 dogs to go on to be the crossbreed dog of the year. Which so, is incredible. So initially, he won his um, he was one rescue dog, didn't he? Which yeah. was the the actual category that he was entered into, which is brilliant, and you can understand why. <laughs> but then went one step further mm. and won the the whole thing. Yeah, that was unbelievable, really. And I'm so proud of him for doing that. And it's been great for the charity as well to be able to. And now that is the charity. Mm. And yeah. how how does that work? Uh, now that we run a clinic in Kabul, Afghanistan. 
Um, we have 14 Afghan nationals, and we're really proud to say that two of those are actually female Afghan nationals who are now practicing vets, um, which would have been unheard of like yeah. three or four years ago. Um, and so the dogs will come to us at the clinic, and then we help. Obviously, we vaccinate new to them, and then we'll help with the soldier fundraise to get that dog out of Afghanistan into wherever the soldier mm. um, lives. And to date, we've actually helped over 700 soldiers from around the world be it's reunited with dogs incredible. like Wiley they've been looking after. Well, we'll put Thank all the details uh, on our He's website. Uh, and, uh, and what a lovely partnership. I know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely to meet you.